I believe most of you do not know Company Handel, so therefore please allow me just a few words about our company. Uh, company Handel is a medium-sized company acting all over the world and uh, with our headquarter uh, in, in Mühlacker in Germany, which is uh, located about 50 kilometers away from, uh, from Stuttgart and Karlsruhe. Our main shareholder is Chase Steel and Sons, which is located in Statesville, uh, North Carolina, US. So you see all the locations where our major shareholder, Chase Steel, is uh, present and also uh, Company Handley, uh, headquarter in Mühlacker, with a small service company in Poland and in Russia. And uh, two years back, we acquired another two companies building dies for the extrusion, which is uh, the company Crown and the company company also located both in Germany. Just a few data. So company Henry is now 146 years old. Uh, we employ approximately 140 people at our headquarter in uh, Mühlacker and the whole crew approximately 400 people. So the main market, I think that's uh, for most of you also uh, similar, is uh, Saudi Arabia, Northern Africa, Russia, uh, and also, let's say, Central Europe. To give you just a rough idea, we have a turnover of approximately 40 million years a year, which is 50% new machines and new plants and 50% service, spare parts and all these uh, after-sales services. So where we come from, our, let's say, main uh, business is the ceramic industry, heavy clay industry, so we supply complete preparation and uh, shaping plants uh, for the production of roofing tiles, floor tiles, uh, bricks, papers, facing bricks, all these uh, different uh, materials. So I start with a question, what do all these products which you see here, all these different profiles have in common? Of course, uh, they are made from different materials, from ceramics, from uh, plastics, uh, from technical ceramics, from clay, but all of them using continuous extrusion technology. So you see this is a proven technology using already in different kind of uh, industries. And we at Hempe, we started uh, with the exclusion of fiber cement already in the middle of the 60s, at the time mainly using fibers uh, of asbestos. And this changed over the years, and uh, in the 90s we improved the developments again with uh, some other companies and clients and then started also to install a few manufacturing lines, mainly in Asia, for the production of uh, wall blocks. Typical products which are used on our production lines are panels, floor planks, stained place formwork, door and window jams, um, trims, and uh, spaces. The next picture gives you a rough overview of what we already did in the past for different customers. For example, one client in Germany, they are using this stained glaze uh, framework for, um, let's say, balconies, uh, terraces, um, for door jams, windows. This is a very um, yeah, successful product on the market. Another typical uh, product are these uh, boards here, or panels, mainly used in the Asian countries for interior and also exterior walls. But uh, you will see a little bit more in detail later. <coughs> typical production process of the production of RC uh, panels and boards starts with the raw material dosing, where we dose the materials from uh, silos in a batch mixing uh, mixer. All the materials 
uh, will be great. First, we start on with the dry mixing, and then uh, we add additives and water, and uh, yeah, the mixing batch takes approximately five to six minutes. Then the next step is continuous proportioning by a box feeder because we require for continuous extrusion also continuous feed. Therefore, this uh, additional step is needed. Then the extrusion follows either by a single or a double shaft extruder, cutting, handling on the wet side, uh, stacking, and all these things, curing either uh, in a curing chamber or a curing tunnel, not in an autoclave. The handling then on the dry side uh, can be then also uh, including grinding, top uh, surface, bottom surface, side surface, depending on the product. Then the final cut to length, destacking, uh, strapping, and then storage also for final curing. Let's say the biggest key for the success of such a production line is not the machine technology but I would say it's the matrix itself. So we have to define with the clients a suitable matrix for their product. Also keeping in mind which products and which materials are available in each country. In which quantities is it in a stable quality available and so on. It makes no sense uh, to ship um, fibers, for example, from Germany to Asia. And I think uh, the materials of the metrics are well known. These are on the one hand cement, limestone, fly ash for sure. Fibers, PP fibers, cellulose, uh, can be even carbon fibers in some cases. Silica, and of course water and some additives to make it extrudable, which are plasticizers, flux, and all these uh, possible additives. <coughs> to determine the right uh, recipe, we have a uh, small lab at our company where we have all the required machines on a lab scale, so bench mixer, extruder, uh, dryers, and all these uh, things. So that's typically where we start a project with a new client to get their raw materials. They have to find the right recipe to extrude the first products. And then, if required, we even have the chance or the possibility to make uh, semi-industrial tests at our uh, small pilot plant in New York. So we see some of the machines for the pilot plants. Over there we also have a batch mixer from company I could set there, so uh, everything is more or less available. To give you an idea how it plant looks like, I'm showing a few pictures. So as I said before, the process starts the dosing and weighing system. Here you see the orders for the different uh, powders, cement, um, sand, and so on. Then the additives are added, um, the fibers, and then later on the water after the dry mixing. A typical arrangement of the mixing plant on the top here is the, the dosing weighing the batch mixer and underneath the box feeder for the continuous proportion through the following extrusion process. <coughs> this picture shows a single uh, over extruder in Thailand for the production of ports. The next one is installation in uh, Australia, in this case with a, a, a double twin over machine which we use mainly for very wide panels with a limited height. So this gives us a very good and even flow throughout the whole width of the, the product. Short video of the extrusion. We'll have here to get an understanding how the extrusion uh, works. Just to give you an idea, the extrusion speed, depending on the product, is approximately five maximum six meters under This is a pressure head die and here you can see the exit of the extruder, the cutter of the saw. And 
remember the panel is cut during extrusion on a pre cutted lens, but we will see this later on. Another application, uh, this is an installation in uh, East Germany, where they also extrude two profiles at the same time. This is uh, also a state based framework, for example. So it's a very economic way as well. After the extrusion, the panels or products are cut into a certain length and then transported on roll belts on trays before they get stiff and then in a semi-automatic or automatic way pushed into a curing chamber or tunnel depending on where it's located. Curing temperature is approximately 40 to 50 degrees and it takes maybe 24 hours to pre-cure it. Of course, then later on we will have a final curing what's actually. So after the, let's say, 24 hours curing, you can have subsequent steps like uh, grinding on the top or on the bottom surface, then final uh, lens will be defined by a gang saw, so maybe you can do from one panel, 6 meter long, two final panels with 2.7, 2.8 meters. And then they are stacked and strapped for, um, for delivery and in the medium or in the meantime state, even on the roof or outside for final curing for another let's say 20 days. Just some figures of a client of us, uh, of a typical FRC panel. Uh, you will have all the data in your uh, in your brochures, uh, just to give you an idea what is a typical panel produced uh, by exclusion. So, this was the production side, now some application. Uh, examples. For example, here in Asia, they're using our technology to make interior and exterior walls for, let's say, prefabricated elements of, let's say, simple houses. Also, for outside cladding of industrial buildings for fast and quick installation. Here it's also a peep prefabricated uh, walls, but uh, with DPS insulation in between, so with uh, interior and outerior wall and in between uh, EPS insulation. It's more or less the same application, but uh, with more, you know, let's say automatic installation with a vacuum cripple. This is in uh, Australia. Another you know, very special application uh, floor planks in a cattle yard in Australia. So all these ways here are done with FRC panels. A little bit older example, but still nice to show a convenience store of a known friend of all of us. So they're using the, the walls also with FRC panels. In China, they are using also the FRC panels for sound barrier walls next to highways, next to railway tracks. Um, this seemingly is a very well established and good market for our clients there. And they even use it also for outside cladding <coughs> buildings, uh, like you can see here. It's also possible to make cornices with a uh, continuous extrusion, and here again um, an example of the stay in place formwork uh, which is produced by company Shrek. So uh, here you can see that at least uh, a nice overview picture of a complete installation uh, of a complete plant. <coughs> Starting with the dosing system, weighing, mixing, then here extrusion, cutting, curing, grinding, 
tracking and then sign up during. Here a few, let's say, advantages would also our customers uh, state to us of this technology, mainly focusing on the using of panels. On the one hand, they are very easy and quick to be installed on site. They can use standard tools, standard techniques. Um, they are wide, uh, very light, as we have a lot of hollow cores in between. And due to the fibers and the metrics, they can be also very strong compared to gypsum boards, for example. On the other hand, they are very economical, exclusion is a continuous process, especially if you compare it with uh, casting. Some of our clients went back from casting and made it now by exclusion. So you need less space, less nodes, and uh, you have quite high output on a small area. Let's say the installation is also very clean. The, uh, the panels, they're already prefabricated in the certain lengths, certain height, so you do not have to have a lot of adjustments on site. And last but not least, uh, also a topic from your side, uh, yesterday it's in some way also environmentally friendly because you can use flyage in the matrix, you can use uh, even waste paper fibers um, to also to reduce the weight and uh, also other recycled materials is possible. But this as I mentioned in the beginning, can be then also tested in our laboratory from client to client and from customer to customer. So, thank you very much.